So to follow up on the second mini exercise, where we try to push information in between the command line through the Rust topic command and the listener node, um, we will continue looking into which types of data can be moved uh, between a node. And there is a quite large set of uh, built-in command types uh, or message types that can be passed along from um, Rust nodes to, to Rust nodes, which is which is uh, found in this list of uh, common messages. And if you try to search on ge geometry messages or sensor messages on, on Google, for instance, you get a, the entire list of uh, what message types are supported. You also have the option of uh, specifying your own message types uh, by utilizing a, a file format more or less like, like this, where you're in a certain file specifies that this message is composed of a string uh, and that string is associated with the name first name a different string which is associated with the last name then an unsigned integer using 8 bit with the H and an unsigned integer with 42 bits with a score um, so you present the data type and then the name of, of that value that is uh, pushed through the, the message system. So I want you to think a bit about what are some of the advantages of using standard bus messages and when do it, does it make sense to create your own bus message uh, types. Um, take a um, think about this for maybe one or two minutes or, and then uh, go on with, with the video. One way of thinking about Rust nodes are that they are a type of uh, building block. And the good thing about uh, building blocks like uh, Legos, for instance, is that they fit together. And the interface between one building block, for instance, uh, black one here and the uh, yellow building block on top of it is that they share an interface or a, um, they agree on how to exchange data in, in this case. So for the black node to be connected with the yellow node, they should agree on how to exchange data. And if you're using one of the built-in data formats uh, that comes out of the uh, black box and is used as input for, for the yellow box or the brick, then they can be connected directly. If they are using different message formats, even if they contain more or less the same kind of information, the, the connector doesn't fit and um, you need to, to find some kind of adapter to, to translate for you. And therefore it makes really good sense to use the built-in data types in, in ROS when it makes sense to do so, which is in most cases, and in the very, in very, very seldom cases, it uh, will make sense to, to generate your own. But take a look at, at the existing message, message types uh, initially before you actually implement your own. Uh, in Rust, there are also other ways of communicating uh, between nodes through what is known as uh, services and access actions, and we will not uh, provide this or give an overview of this inside the course. Um, this is out of the scope. So the next thing to, to deal a bit with is to how to visualize data in ROS. And um, at some point it'll make sense to record ROS backs so we can see what actually happened after it had happened, after we have done the, the experiment. Um, and we can expect inspect a Rust back using this RQT back uh, command. And we can also try to load data from a Rust back into Python uh, directly. And if we want to do online visualization, that is while the experiment is running or the UAV is flying, then we can uh, use some of the built-in uh, Rust nodes for 
doing 3D visualizations or plotting live data to make a 2D plot. We can call the RQT graph uh, module to get an overview of how data is flowing around inside the system. And finally, the RQT image view uh, can be used to show the images that are passed uh, through a, a certain Rust topic. And of course, it's also possible to, to build your own custom nodes for visualizing data in a certain way. Yes. Um, so if we should look at an example for how to visualize data, it requires us to launch the ROS core, and then we can use the ROS pack module to play back an existing ROS file, like this example.back file. Here we uh, run it with a command uh, that reduces the rate of the events that was recorded in the example back uh, to one tenth of the original speed. So we actually slow down time when we inspect what happened here. Um, and then we can look into this uh, ROS run, or we can launch the RVIS uh, command to actually visualize the data that was embedded inside the example back over here. And this is exactly what we want to do in the last mini exercise uh, here in the third one. So give that a try.